Hello, and welcome to the Brandt Almond Fertility Program webinar. Thanks for tuning in today. The goal of today's talk is to present um, the various Brandt nutrition products that can help growers achieve uh, both yield improvements and overall improvements in almond tree health. Um, and this is intended to be targeted towards growers in the Central Valley of California. So we're gonna go through different stages of the almond crop development and discuss ways that we can use plant nutrition as physiological tools to help uh, influence different yield components of that almond crop. And as we go through it, we're gonna take a couple of detours to talk about uh, the advantages and some of the technology within the different brand product platforms. And I wanna make a comment that today's nutrition program is intended to be sort of added on to a really a base grower fertility program that, you know, to my mind would consist of in-season nitrogen fertigation with a product like UAN32 or maybe CAN17. And then likely a late fall to early winter post-harvest application of sulfate of potash. So most of what you're, we're gonna talk about today are micronutrient applications like zinc and iron, uh, secondary nutrients like calcium, magnesium, and then some in-season fertigation applications of um, some macronutrients like potassium, phosphorus, and sulfur. And the way we're gonna structure today's talk is by getting into four distinct yield goals um, that we're trying to influence with our fertility program. And within each of these yield goals, we'll break down the different crop stages that are influencing those goals and talk about what we can do from a plant nutrition standpoint to achieve those goals and in order to achieve a healthier tree and better almond yields. So first goal is to optimize pollination. So we're gonna do that with some foliar nutrient applications intended to improve pollen viability, flower health, and disease resistance. Next is we wanna maximize nut retention. And then during this period, we're trying to kickstart photosynthetic production in order to maximize early carbohydrate delivery to those nuts. We also wanna maximize root growth so that we're getting good early season nitrogen uptake and nitrogen utilization within the plant. Then during kernel development, we're trying to maximize kernel sizing and kernel dry weight so that at the end of the season, we're getting a good edible yield. We're going to do that by providing a lot of, of highly plant available potassium to the soil, but we're also going to be looking to maintain good carbohydrate production as well as nitrogen uptake and utilization. And finally, we want to look at uh, ensuring good bud development, both our fruiting and our vegetative buds, so that we get our crop off to a good start next year and maximize nut set going into next season. So the first goal we wanna talk about is optimizing pollination. So we're gonna do this through foliar applications of boron, calcium, and zinc. And all of these nutrients are really critical for flower development, disease resistance, and pollen viability. And that pollen viability component relates back to the pollen tube elongation. When that pollen grain lands on the female part of the flower, it extends itself down into the ovules of the flower where it then fertilizes the female part of the flower in order to produce a viable nut. But that pollen tube structure, it's a very fragile structure and it needs to extend into the flower very rapidly and boron, calcium, and zinc help strengthen that structure and speed up that process so that it can be done within the flower viability window, which as most almond growers know, those flowers are not viable for very long. So we want that process to occur rapidly and successfully and boron, calcium, and zinc are really critical to that process. So the first crop stage we're gonna be talking about is pink bud. And during this timing, 
best thing you can be looking at is a foliar application of a boron product. I've got a few products listed there, Smart B, Smart BMO, Manaplex Calvi. You'd want to choose one of those three. And in each case, as we go through these different crop stages, I'm going to highlight one or maybe a couple of the products that we're recommending. Those are just the products that I think are going to have the best fit for the most growers uh, across different soil types, different locations in the valley. Uh, but your scenario may be different based on your soil type, the weather conditions you're dealing with, those types of environmental factors may, may indicate that you want to go with a different product. So we, we generally list a few different options there. Um, a couple of things I want to hit on with this foliar boron application. Uh, number one is we want to be making a foliar spray during this timing because we have very poor soil uptake early in the spring. Our feeder roots have not emerged yet. The soil is generally very cold. So we're not pulling up a lot of nutrition from the soil. So if we want to get nutrition to our crop at this time, we have to do it with a foliar spray. Number two, it, ideally we want to be putting this on at pink bud or at the latest at about 10% open bloom. I have seen growers do foliar boron sprays during full bloom and I've seen that work successfully. However, there's a lot of evidence that applying foliar boron onto an open flower can in some cases abort those flowers or even cause phytotoxicity. So to reduce your risk, Ideally, we want to be putting on that on pre-bloom. And then lastly, when considering making a foliar boron spray pre-bloom, we want to think about what did you do post-harvest last season? Did you make a foliar boron spray uh, late last summer or during the early fall period after harvest, but before the leaves fell off the tree? Uh, if you didn't do that, then you are very likely to see a, a positive yield response from this pre-bloom boron spray. There's a lot of evidence that um, pollination in almond flowers is really driven by boron status of those flowers. And so if those flowers don't have adequate boron, you're not going to get as good of a pollination as you want. And that is your first um, yield limiting component. If you, don't for, if you don't pollinate and fertilize those flowers, they cannot later develop into nuts. And if you miss that window, there's nothing you can do to sort of make up that yield loss. Let's take a quick detour here and talk about some of the, this smart boron family of products. There, so there are four formulations I've listed here um, that have boron and some other nutrients added to them. But what unites these four formulations is the boron in all four of these products has this cross-linked complex where the boron at the center of this structure has this uh, tetrahedral bond where it's bound to four oxygens in a way that really closely mimics the way boron ties to pectin networks within the cell wall. So because it's mimicking this natural structure, it's a really strong complex and it protects that boron ion which gives us advantages from both foliar nutrient efficacy and tank mix compatibility. So let's talk about each of those in turn. So first, foliar nutrient efficacy, and I've got two animations here that kind of illustrate that concept, and I'm gonna replay these here in a second. The product that's being applied here is boric acid. This is basically an industry standard boron formulation. Even a 10% liquid boron or something like solubor, when it dissolves in water, it basically behaves like boric acid. And once it's in water, that boron ion gets a negative charge associated with it. And then what, and, and it'll move pretty effectively through the leaf cuticle. But once it gets down into the layers of the actual leaf itself, a lot of that boron is going to get tied up in these cell wall pectins of these top layers of the leaf. That's what the brown dots here are, are showing us. The yellow dots are the boric acid. The brown dots are the boron that is tied up, cross-linked to the cell walls. And when we're making a foliar spray, we want as much as possible for that foliar boron to penetrate to the lower 
mesophyll layers of that leaf where our vascular bundles are. This is going to enable that foliar applied boron to mobilize both within the leaf that absorbed it, but also mobilize to other parts of the plant, which is going to make it a more successful uh, foliar spray. So let's look really quickly at that animation one more time here. So you can see as those boric acid molecules move down through the leaf, a lot of them are tying up in the top layers of that leaf. Now moving on here, let's consider the diagram on the left where we have smart boron that has that cross-linked complex. Because of that protection, a lot less of the smart boron, which is represented by the red dots, is tying up and cross-linking with the cell walls in the top layers of the, um, of the leaf. And so we have a lot more red dots getting down to those vascular bundles. And again, we'll show this animation one more time here. So because less of the smart boron is tying up in the cell walls on the top layers of the leaf, we're getting more absorption down into the lower layers of the leaf. And this is going to enhance mobility of this formulation. The other advantage of the cross-linked boron complex in, that, in these, this family of products is tank mix compatibility, particularly with positively charged cation nutrients, such as calcium, potassium, zinc, or iron. All of these has a po have a positive charge that when they blend with the negative charge of boron, they tend to tie up together. And that's what we're seeing on the left here. We've got calcium nitrate blended with a 10% liquid boron, which is kind of an industry standard product. The calcium, the positively charged calcium and the negatively charged boron are tying up together, forming this insoluble calcium borate precipitate that is going to be highly unavailable to the plant because of its poor solubility, but it can also potentially plug up your spray nozzles if you're making a foliar spray or if you're applying this to your drip system, could plug up your drip emitters. Conversely, on the right, we've got calcium nitrate blended with our Brandt Smart Boron, which is, um, again, has that cross-linked uh, boron complex, which protects the negative charge of the boron. And so it's not tying up with that calcium. And so as a result, we're seeing a uh, nice clear solution with both the calcium and the boron remaining highly plant available and not going to plug up our spray nozzles. Moving on in pollination, let's consider the full bloom period. And here we want to be coming in with foliar calcium and zinc. A great product for this is our Manaplex CalZinc, which has got both of those nutrients blended together. You may also want to consider a couple of our other Manaplex formulations, such as Folical or Manaplex Zinc. And what we're trying to do here with calcium and zinc is both of these nutrients really help with that fertilization process that we were talking about earlier, where the pollen tube is extending into the flower. Calcium and zinc really help strengthen and enhance that process. But both of these nutrients are also really critical for disease resistance. And as most almond growers know, open bloom is a really uh, vulnerable time for the almond crop in terms of disease susceptibility. So we've got a lot of diseases like blossom brown rot or bacterial blast, which like to infect these open blooms. So strengthening and enhancing the immunity of these flower structures by adding some calcium and zinc to them can help those flowers resist those types of early spring diseases. And for calcium in particular, because calcium has such poor mobility within the crop, a foliar spray of calcium that's directly absorbed by the flower tissue can be uh, the best way to enhance calcium status of your floral tissue. If you made in-season fertigation applications of say calcium nitrate last season, most of that calcium that the plant absorbed went into the leaves of last season's crop. Very little of it actually got into the, the fruiting buds. So again, if you want to get more calcium into your flower structures, best way to do it is with a foliar spray 
of one of these Manaplex products, either pre-bloom or during full bloom. So let's take a detour and talk about these Manaplex formulations. This is really our flagship foliar nutrient product line. And as you can see, we've got a lot of different formulations available. These products have been in the California market for over 20 years now. The products on the left in this red table, these are the formulations we're talking about today as part of our almond nutrition program. But you can see we have a lot more formulations in the green table over on the right. We're not gonna be talking about them today, but many of those formulations may have a good fit in almond production. You know, it's all gonna be based off of what type of nutrient deficiencies you're dealing with, uh, weather issues, variety status, all those types of things. So, you know, we've, we've got a lot of flexibility with this Manaplex product line. Couple things from a formulation standpoint I wanna hit on. Number one, most of these formulations utilize nitrate-based products in the formulation. For instance, our Manaplex zinc is formulated with zinc nitrate. So for that reason, a lot of these formulations, you see about three to 5% nitrogen in the formulation, which is mostly coming from the nitrate source. And because almonds are such a big nitrogen uh, user, that's generally gonna be beneficial. Another point is most of these Manaplex formulations are gonna be compatible with the vast majority of insecticides and fungicides that you may be putting in your spray tank at various times during the season. So we're not gonna likely have any compatibility issues. But what really makes the Manaplex delivery system unique is the sugar alcohol complexing agents that we use. And that's actually where this product line gets its name from. So this molecule here in the middle, this is a sugar alcohol called mannitol. So that's where the Manaplex name comes from. It's basically a short chain linear sugar structure. These zigzag structure here in the middle, those are carbon molecules. And you can see there are these alcohol groups, these OHs that are bound to each of the carbon molecules. Those alcohol groups are what bind to the nutrient and this forms a type of complex that helps protect the nutrient and cover up the charge of the nutrient, preventing it from tying up either in the tank mix or from binding to the leaf cuticle after it's applied. So complexing your nutrients enhances foliar nutrient efficacy. But there's a lot of different complexing agents out there and chelating agents that you might see in the foliar nutrient market. The sugar alcohol delivery system that we use in our Manaplex products has a lot of advantages over some of those other complexing agents. Number one is small molecule size. Sugar alcohols are, are relatively small compared to other complexes and chelates. And movement, once that spray lands on the leaf cuticle, it's got to get through that waxy hydrophobic leaf cuticle. And the way foliar nutrients do that is they move through stomata, cuticular pores, or cracks and imperfections in that cuticle. So all of those openings are very small. So the smaller our foliar carrier is, the more successful our absorption is going to be. So if you compare a sugar alcohol to something like an EDTA or a fulvic acid or a lignosulfonate, those molecules are much larger and so sugar alcohols are gonna have a much better time getting through the small openings in the cuticle. Number two is sugar alcohols are natural humectants. This means that they absorb free moisture from the atmosphere. They actually take the water vapor that's in the air and bring it into solution. So this is advantageous because after you make that foliar spray, that spray droplet immediately starts to dry out. And so having a humectant like a sugar alcohol helps counteract that process and maintains leaf wetness for a longer period of time. And the longer that spray droplet is wet, the longer your period of absorption is going to be. Um, lastly here is plant recognition. Plants actually naturally produce sugar alcohols such as sorbitol as a way of translocating energy and sugars throughout the plant. So they actually have existing mechanisms 
for moving these types of molecules. So in our Maniplex formulations, the nutrients that are complexed to those sugar alcohols are going to be able to take advantage of those existing transport mechanisms. And this enhances the mobility of those nutrients once they're absorbed. So the next goal we wanna talk about is enhancing nut retention. After those flowers are fertilized, we see several waves of nut drop. The early ones are really from flowers that didn't get properly pollinized or fertilized. But by late April to early May, we see a final wave of nut drop that's actually occurring with fully expanded nuts. And that last wave of nut drop is occurring because the plant cannot produce enough carbohydrates or nitrogen to feed that, that developing nut. And so it has to drop some of those nuts. So what we're trying to do during this period is counteract that process by maximizing carbohydrate production, nitrogen uptake, and nitrogen utilization. So from a foliar standpoint, we're gonna apply magnesium and a lot of micronutrients that help kickstart the photosynthetic process and also help stimulate nitrogen utilization. So first crop stage in this window is petal fall. And in petal fall, a great product is our Maniplex for tree nuts. This has been a, a really good product for us in California. There are a lot of growers already out there using this formulation, both on almonds and pistachios. It's got some zinc, magnesium, copper, and a little bit of boron. You may want to consider tank mixing with that product a little bit of our Maniplex zinc, particularly if you did not put any foliar zinc on at pre-bloom or during bloom. It's, it's not a bad idea to supplement the Maniplex for tree nuts with a little extra zinc with that Maniplex zinc product. During leaf out, you may want to come back with a second shot of our Maniplex for tree nuts and also mix that with some Maniplex manganese and Maniplex iron. Those micronutrients, man manganese and iron, I would especially recommend that if you know that your orchard has had a history of deficiencies of those micronutrients, don't wait until it shows up in late April or early May. Make those applications early in the spring, during leaf out, get ahead of those deficiencies if you know your orchard has a history of them. Another nutrient you may want to consider during this time is molybdenum with our Maniplex Molly product. You can apply a very low rate of that product and get a nice response. It helps convert nitrate nitrogen into ammonium nitrogen that the plant can then utilize to create the different nitrogen-based structures. So considering a little Molly there is not a bad idea as well. Now, from a fertigation standpoint during this window, we definitely want to be thinking about putting some zinc and phosphorus out. Both of these nutrients are important to root growth and energy production, and there's a lot of that going on during this period in the crop cycle. You may also want to consider starting some fertigation applications of potassium because of the, the nuts, as they're starting to expand, are going to start to pull up potassium from the soil. Also, sulfur can be beneficial because as you're pulling nitrogen up, sulfur is going to help convert that nitrogen into amino acids. So here we're back to this petal fall to leaf out period. And for fertigation applications, we want to be using a number of our Brandt ends up products like ends up zinc, ends up P, and potentially ends up K and ends up S as well. And I'm going to take a detour here and talk some more about these ends up products. There's a lot uh, of beneficial things going on with these formulations, but what really makes them unique is all of these formulations have enzymes in the products that are designed to synergize with the nutrients that are in those individual formulations. So let's start out with talking about what enzymes are. So enzymes are proteins that catalyze biological reactions. Basically, they either put things together or pull things apart. And in the soil, there are a lot of different enzymes that are either secreted by the plant roots or more often, they're produced by beneficial soil microbes. And they perform a number of really important ecological services, such as conversion of organic and inorganic nutrients. 
nitrogen fixation, carbon cycling, and even pesticide degradation. And many of these enzymes require some type of metallic cofactor, the most common of which is zinc, in order to properly function. Now this is a really important point. Enzymes are not alive. They're not living organisms. They don't reproduce. They don't require nutrients or food in order to survive. They're simply a biologically produced chemical that performs a specific task. However, they can degrade under environmental conditions. And what makes the ends up product line unique versus prior generations of enzyme-based products is we have technology in the formulation that helps stabilize these enzymes both within the formulation and in the soil after it's applied so that we get several weeks of activity out of these enzymes after they're applied to the soil. So these are the various products that we have available in the California market. On the left, you can see the product name followed by the nutrient analysis in the products, the formulation type, and then on the far right, those are the enzymes that are in those formulations. So we've got an ends up zinc product, which is a 4% EDTA chelated zinc. Then we have three different dry soluble formulations, a P, K, and S, and those dry soluble products dissolve really well in water. If you've got hot water, you can go up to two pounds per gallon. Um, but if you've got cold water, you want to be around one pound per gallon with those dry solubles. And then we have various NPK liquid formulations. Those are only available in bulk quantities. Um, and we have a variety of different analyses there. I didn't list all of them because probably there's too many to really get into. And we're always coming up with new formulations. So if you want more information about those NPK liquids, reach out to your local retailer or look it up on our, our website, brant.co. We have all of our formulations listed there. So let's talk about the enzymes that are in these different formulations. And we're gonna start first with mannanase. So mannanase is in all of the different ends up formulations. What it does is it breaks down the long chain carbon structures that are either in the soil organic matter or that are being secreted by root exudates. And there's a couple of advantages to doing this. Number one is in the soil, converting those long chain carbon structures into smaller, simpler sugars provides a food source and an energy source, both to the plant roots, but especially to the beneficial soil microbes. So it gets those microbial populations growing early in the spring, which can be really beneficial for soil health. The other thing mannanase does is it's breaking down these root exudates that the feeder roots are secreting during the early spring. So that's going to enhance water and nutrient uptake. So we're gonna get some of these early nutrients like nitrogen taken up more rapidly which during this nut retention period can be really critical to maximizing the number of nuts that that tree is holding on to. The next enzyme is lipase. Lipase is only found in our ends up zinc product. It breaks down the lipid portion of the organic matter. So it's working on different types of molecules than mannanase, but it's performing a very similar task. It's breaking down these big lipid structures into smaller, simpler sugars that again are providing an energy source primarily to the, benefic the beneficial soil microbes. So also good for, for soil health. Lipase can also potentially mineralize some organic nitrogen and organic phosphorus that may be tied up in the lipid portion of the organic matter. Last enzyme is phosphatase. This is in all of our NP NPK and S formulations. What phosphatase does is it breaks down organic pea that may be in the soil organic matter, cover crop residue or manure or compost applications, converts that organic pea into inorganic orthophosphate that then is immediately plant available. Last comment I want to make on these ends up products is all of these formulations, except for the ends up zinc, are formulated with organic acids. And those organic acids are designed to improve plant availability of the inorganic nutrients that are in these formulations, especially phosphorus. So what organic acids can do is once they're in the soil, they chelate, 
cations like calcium and iron and prevent them from tying up with the phosphorus that's in those formulations. So this make that maintains plant availability of the inorganic phosphorus that's in those formulations. Also, organic acids are great pH buffers. So they help buffer that pH into the five and a half to six and a half range where nutrient availability of a lot of our inorganic nutrients is going to be highly available to the plant. So let's move on here to our third goal, which is maximizing kernel sizing. So from a foliar standpoint, we're going to be hitting again a lot of these micronutrients that are involved in photosynthetic efficiency and nitrogen utilization because carbohydrate production and nitrogen utilization, again, are really critical during kernel development. So if you're making a foliar spray, let's say you're making a May spray in order to get on uh, a insecticide for leaf-footed bug or maybe a miticide to deal with some spider mites, you may want to include one of our Manaplex products or potentially Smart BMO. And which product to choose, you should look at your mid-April leaf tissue samples. Hopefully you're pulling those mid-April samples to look at your nitrogen levels, see if you need to make any adjustments. Look at the micronutrients at that time. Do you have any deficiency showing up or are any of your micros low? If so, you know, maybe throw out one or two of these Manaplex products to get ahead of those deficiencies and get those leaves back to uh, uh, fully optimized photosynthetic efficiency. Now from a fertigation standpoint, this kernel sizing period is really critical for potassium uptake. So we want to be thinking about making multiple applications of our ends up K product. Remember, that's a highly plant available form of potassium that's going to be immediately available for uptake during this period of high potassium demand. And you've got the enzymes in there to enhance availability of organic nutrients. You may also want to consider adding some ends up S to enhance nitrogen utilization and conversion into amino acids during this time. Last goal we want to look at is, max, is improving bud development so that we uh, ensure a good nut set and early season plant growth going into next season. So from a foliar standpoint, we definitely want to think about zinc and boron and potentially potassium. Great product during this time is Brandt Smart KB. It's got that cross-link boron technology in it with also a little potassium added to it. And then our Manaplex Zinc would be a good idea at this time, especially if your zinc levels were low in that, that uh, midsummer leaf tissue sample, throwing in some zinc is a good idea. For boron, you wanna look at your whole boron analysis that hopefully you or your PCA pulled at harvest. If that boron level in the hole is at 120 part per million or less, then you're very likely to see a yield response with a foliar boron spray either at post-harvest now or pre-bloom next spring. And whether you're gonna put that boron on now or next spring, I would say look at what your weather conditions are typically like in the spring. If you're up in the Sacramento Valley where you get a lot of spring rainfall in normal seasons and you might have difficulty getting a spray rig out in the spring, you know, it's a great idea to put that foliar boron on now Boron actually mobilizes really well within almond crops. And um, you should get really good mobilization, especially with the Smart Boron product, going from the leaves into your fruiting buds for next year. From a fertigation standpoint, potassium, again, we want to be thinking about hitting that. Especially, let's say you had a really big crop this year and your, your midsummer leaf tissue levels show that your K values we're at 1.4% or less, then you want to try to remediate that with a, with a post-harvest fertigation of some ends up K. You may also want to consider some ends up P, especially if your phosphate was a little low, or, um, you know, phosphate's not a bad idea during this time because you tend to get a fall root flush during this period in most seasons, so that, that phosphate can help feed the, uh, that root flush also remember the enzymes in these products is also going to help that fall root flush as well. So let's do a recap here. Um, 
during pink bud and, and full bloom, we want to be making foliar applications of boron, calcium, and zinc to help optimize pollination and maximize the amount of those flowers that we're actually going to fertilize. During petal fall and leaf out, from a foliar standpoint, we want to be making applications of magnesium and micronutrients that are going to facilitate good photosynthetic efficiency and nitrogen utilization to maximize nut retention. During that same period, we want to start our ends up products through the fertigation uh, applications in order to provide uh, sources of these nutrients that are immediately plant available, but also a high dose of enzymes that are going to help with soil health, root development, and early season nutrient uptake. During kernel development, if you're making a foliar spray, look at your mid-April leaf tissue samples. If you are deficient or low in any micronutrients, maybe put a Manaplex product or a Smart Boron product out at that time. And for fertigation, you really want to be hitting that ends up K, get some potassium on that's immediately plant available. So maybe supplementing that with some ends up S as well can be beneficial. And then at post-harvest, doing some foliar zinc with maybe some foliar boron and potassium, help feed those fruiting buds going into next season. And from a fertigation standpoint, look at your midsummer leaf tissue levels. If you were low in potassium or phosphate, uh, doing some ends up K or ends up P during this time can be really beneficial. To wrap things up here, I want to talk about the Brandt team in California. We've talked about a lot of products and technology at Brandt, and certainly Brandt does those things very well. But what I think makes Brandt stand out is the people that, that we have supporting those products. This is our sales team on the left. You can see uh, we've got five different territory sales reps in the state of California. And all of these guys are super knowledgeable. They've all been in the business a long time. And um, so you could see their email and contact information. If you're in that area, they can help you with product questions and also help you uh, if you're trying to find a retailer that sells brand products. And these guys are managed by Bill Oglesby, who's a regional sales manager. He's based out of Fresno um, and he manages California and Arizona for us. On the right is our product support team. Um, they support uh, not only our nutrition products that we talked about today, but also our crop protection products, adjuvants, our water treatment line, our hydrology products. And then uh, we've also got our, our discovery and innovation team that helps put out trials to evaluate the, all of the products that Brandt has, make sure that we're, um, putting out good technology for you guys. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want more information, there's our website, brandt.co. All the product labels are on there. You could also go on to Agrian. We list all of our products there. Uh, you could also follow us on Facebook or Twitter if, if you like. So that's all I got. Thank you very much and good luck next growing season. Thank you. <laughs>